manganese is a trace element required by the body for many important processes. I mean, what nutrient isn't? And like iron, like copper, like zinc, manganese is a metal. And when I hear the word trace mineral, I generally associate it with a mineral that people don't really talk about when discussing nutrition. A lot of stuff hits the mainstream. This one doesn't, possibly because severe deficiency is rare, but it is safe to say that standard American dieters don't have optimal levels of any nutrients, so manganese isn't an exception, especially when you consider what we need for optimal health. And this is one of the minerals that the carnivore diet doesn't have enough of. Certain shellfish do have decent amounts of manganese and those other elements that the carnivore diet is deficient in, but for the most part, manganese is specific to plant foods. And even so, shellfish is so toxic and polluted, you don't really want to use it for any source of nutrients unless it's from a really specific location, ocean, or sea that is known for having minimal pollution levels. Now, I went on Google and I took the most popular list of high manganese foods. I put the ones that I wouldn't really consume in red and the acceptable ones in blue. Mussels are so polluted, as we just said. No one eats wheat germ. It's like a byproduct of wheat processing. Tofu is, <laughs> tofu is poisonous. Sweet potatoes aren't good for most people. Pine nuts are okay, but they're super expensive. Brown rice is typically high in arsenic. Lima beans, regional, hard to access. Chickpeas, kind of okay. Like, are you eating hummus though? Spinach. Too many anti-nutrients, although spinach might be okay for some people. Pineapple, however, is a pretty realistic food to consume, but again, very seasonal, usually high quality organic, is expensive, it's hard to get. And they aren't super concentrated in manganese. And are you digesting it as well? That's why supplements are a little bit easier because it's so concentrated, you know you're absorbing it. Now, since this list is from a website, you know, they didn't actually go out and take every single food possible and look up their manganese content. So it's pretty deceptive. It excludes many foods that are also excellent sources of manganese. But from this list with some critical thinking, you can deduce what those are. Like, hey, if pine nuts have a lot of manganese, other nuts probably do as well. If your diet is balanced and you're consuming nuts and grains on a frequent basis, you probably have enough manganese in your body for maintenance levels. Even in my diet where I'm eating pasta and macadamia nut butter, I'm getting enough manganese. The problem occurs when your liver is dysfunctioning, your digestive system doesn't work properly, and you can't actually absorb the mineral from the food. So the raw tards, a lot of people love to say, oh, get your nutrients from food, get your nutrients from food. Yeah, well, if your digestive system isn't working and you're not absorbing them, you can't get it from food. Broadly speaking, manganese is needed for bone formation, reproductive and immune system health, blood sugar regulation, cellular energy, digestion, wound healing, metabolism. For intracellular activity, it's a cofactor for many enzymes involved in those processes we just mentioned, development, digestion, reproduction, antioxidant defense, energy production, immune response, regulation of neuronal activities. The beneficial effects of manganese are from its incorporation into metalloproteins, simply proteins that contain at least one metal ion, copper, zinc, manganese, all being metals. Functions of these manganese metalloproteins include all of those enzymatic processes that we mentioned. One of those metalloproteins is crucial for scavenging reaction oxygen species in mitochondrial oxidative stress, and that basically means inflammation. Increased levels of oxidative stress equal inflammation that ultimately lead to metabolic diseases that we know, diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. Despite manganese being one of the more needed minerals in the body, our tissue concentrations are fairly high compared to other minerals. Deficiency in medical literature is incredibly rare. On the contrary, manganese excess in a condition known as manganism is pretty well documented, but again, there's no actual cases reported from diet, which doesn't make much sense. Manganese is used in herbicides, pesticides, it's sprayed on crops, people eat a lot of whole grains, there's manganese in multivitamins. You would assume 
someone had to overdose on it at some point. So there's got to be some type of fluke there because the only reported cases of manganese toxicity are you know, specific occupations where they're exposed to metals at unsafe levels, mainly welders, certain people removing different materials off walls without proper you know, ventilation and masks. Now, my issue is that these researchers have these crazy understandings of biochemistry, stuff I can't even remember, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours in research looking at studies, but they overlook simple concepts of nutrition, like antagonistic nutrients. They focus so much on the manganese toxicity, why is it happening, what are the symptoms, trying to deduce food sources and pollutants without realizing it's about the big picture. In this case, calcium, iron, and magnesium play critical roles in manganese metabolism. And this is why manganese deficiency manifests itself on a carnivore diet. Carnivore is very high in iron with very little calcium and magnesium. The three main minerals that are symbiotic with manganese are way off in the context of an only meat diet. And the bigger problem there is probably a magnesium deficiency as opposed to calcium or too much iron. So manganese just becomes very depleted as well as some other minerals that I've mentioned in the past on a carnivore diet. So not everyone's carnivore. What about a standard American diet? It's lacking whole foods, those higher quality grains, nuts, and seeds. And I would speculate the average person would benefit greatly by incorporating more of these foods into their diet, especially organic, and would also see a substantial boost by taking a manganese supplement for a week or two. But that applies to so many other nutrients and minerals, not just manganese. It's, it's kind of irritating to see people isolate a specific nutrient and say how it's so beneficial because you really need a complete lifestyle and diet to not be messing up too many things. Either way, taking a hair mineral analysis can help you pinpoint your manganese status, other mineral status, regardless of what diet you're on. It may be as simple as taking one or two different minerals that you're deficient in, combined with a high quality organic diet based around whole foods, and then over the course of several months, that should fix everything up. I do have a trace mineral supplement on organsupplements.com that includes manganese, molybdenum, and boron. And I'll try to talk about those other two minerals more in depth in the next few weeks. But as I said earlier, hypothetically, if you're following a healthy diet with high quality foods, you shouldn't need to supplement. But with all the Wi-Fi EMF, with organ dysfunction, with past lifestyles, People just don't have digestive systems that are capable of fully absorbing these nutrients from food. And if you're deficient in a mineral, but you need the mineral to properly digest food, how are you going to get it? That's why these specific isolations of mineral supplements are a good, quick, temporary fix. And then hopefully you can get your digestive system working in a reasonable period of time so that you don't have to continue taking them. That could take months. It could take years. So thank you guys for joining me. Hopefully this helped you out. Uh, you can go to frank-stefano.com to support me through all of my businesses. You'll see organsupplements.com where we have the trace mineral supplement as well as some very interesting stuff. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. I'm fairly convinced that the only reason they keep me around is because I keep making this content and then 15 other YouTube channels can plagiarize it two weeks from now and not mention me, but uh, whatever. <laughs>